Good afternoon, baseball fans, and welcome back to the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe here at Capital City at the Super Colossal Dome. Here we are, game two. Bananas walked away with a 2 1 win yesterday after a 10 inning th uh, thriller. As Jay Green's going to connect on the first pitch of the day. Calgucci will scoop it up, though, for the easy 1 3 out. And boy howdy, was that a game for the ages. That is the second longest Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe game, the uh, series game ever played in league history. Short of the extra inning scare of 72, which went to 16, so... At least the one that fans have something to be happy about there. After dropping game one of this best of five series, as Sonia Hagen connects on that one. Basket catch by Morgan is good for out number two. It was the quite the defensive battle for the most part, for the first half of the game at least, yesterday. Justinda Smith kicked off the the scoring in the bottom of the first with an RBI double. And then the next inning, the Bananas came back and scored in response to tie it up at one apiece. A Zenith from belts that deep in the center field. Keisha Phillips gets under it. Easy catch, though, running into the warning track for out number three. And up come the Wombats. First at bat today for the Wombats will be Pete Wheeler, as always, nursing the ACL sprain. I'm gonna hit a touchdown. Has hampered his ability to get on base, but his batting ability has kept him afloat here in the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. Anyway, going back to our Game 1 recap. Tie game after 5. Bottom of the 6, Kalguchi's had enough, and... Benny walked out, and took him off the mound, put in Pablo Sanchez the pitch in relief, thinking we could clean this up in one or two innings. Ended up going to extra, 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 extra innings, I should say. And then... It, uh, in the top of the 10th, Julie Dunkel. Uh, Wheeler. Gets that hit off, but he's not going to be able to make it the first in time. They're seeing that ACL sprain, as you know, in the BBFL, BBL. There are no pinch runners, so... Out number one. Top of the tenth inning. Nobody on. No outs. Julie Dunkel for the Bananas hit it in the park home run after a comedy of errors on behalf of the Wombats, as well as some controversial calls from the umpire that day. And I've been checking out the Wombat chat boards all day and all day yesterday and they definitely were not happy but as you know there's no way to challenge this going up to the league so game one goes to the bananas 2-1 now up annie frazier 0-1 count that's going to get over the pitcher's head the glove of the center fielder and she'll be able to get to first before the ball and She'll reach on a single, bringing up Dante Robinson. I'm ready for you. Tough heartbreak there for the Wombats in Game 1, but in the post-game press conference, Coach Vinny did not seem phased, and she was ready to come back out the next day, which would now be today, and see what they'll be able to put together. Robinson will connect on that one. Grounder straight to the second baseman. Will he be able to pick it up in time? They toss it over him, but he bumbles the catch, and Frazier will advance in this second. Robinson will reach first and bring up Stephanie Morgan up the bat. As you can tell, I've modeled my stance off the Great Bay Brute. Morgan connects on that. Grounder, shallow infield. They whip it to third base. Frazier's not going to get there in time, and that's going to be out number three. After one, it's scoreless here at the Super Colossal Dome. Leah Wayne comes up the bat for her first time here. Beautiful downtown capital city at the Super Colossal Dome, built in 94. After the city acquired the... 
Sonics. Uh, Washington Supersonics. Rename the team, of course, to the Capital City Capitals. And then look back, as you can see with this beautiful stadium. 2-3 is successful there, and they're going to be out number one, bring up Francis Bluer. A lot of theatrics in this playoff run for the Wombats. They finished the regular season 13-1, only dropping a game in garbage time, just before heading into the All-City Championship Tournament. As she connects on that one, we'll get past Kalguchi to Frazier. She whips it the first, and the 4-3 is successful for out number two. Wombats stomped their way through the All-City Championship, won it two games to none against the mighty All-Stars. Then uh, went to three games in the Super Entire Nation Tournament against the Woolly Mammoths as he's going to pop that one up. Kalaguchi gets under it. Sanchez leaps over Kalaguchi to make the catch for out number three in some unneeded heroics, but we'll take whatever we can get here, Wombat fans. Since the playoffs started, it's been very dangerous out there. But as we hit Game 2 of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe, we'll see that the Wombats are not out of tricks yet, as Phillips' ball gets past the center fielder. She's going to round first, come the second, and looks like she's going to take off for third. Looks like she should be able to reach easily, and she does, so... A double, a uh, triple, I'm sorry, for Keisha Phillips, your league co-leader in RBIs this regular season, with the current at-bat, Jocinda Smith. They each brought in 17 runs this past season. Smith connects on that one. Grounder gets past the pitcher into the glove of the shortstop, whoops the first, and that will be the easy out. For out number one, here at bottom of the second inning, we are moving quickly, ladies and gentlemen. Leo Lane out on the mound there for the Bananas. Had a great game of pitching yesterday. As Khan connects on that one, that's going to get over the head of the shortstop, and he's going to bring Keisha Phillips home. Ladies and gentlemen, Wombat fans, your Wild Wombats are on the board. They strike first here in Game 2 of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. E RBI double there for Kenny Kawaguchi. Okay, pitcher, give me one right over the center. For Khan, I'm sorry, Kawaguchi's coming to bat. A little frazzled out here. So, big city lights. As I said, Kenny Kalaguchi, Junior Cy Young Award winner for this year, out on the taking his first at bat today. Faces ones across the board. The man on second, Khan has some speed behind him. So if we get this out of the outfield, out of the infield, I'm sorry, he could move it. Scrambles up on top of the dugout, but is not able to pull that one in. One two count. Kalaguchi sends back the first free souvenir of the day. Have fun with that. Kalguchi, you will most likely... I've seen him do it before. He'll go and sign it after the game. But that's going to be a swing and a see ya for Kalaguchi. Out number two, the man in scoring position bringing back Pete the Steeler Wheeler, your regular season leader in hits, steals, and runs scored with 31, 19, and 19 respectively during the regular season. Batting 520 this playoff and entering the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe has had his uh, way of play completely rocked. Sustained an ACL sprain in the in Game 3 of the Super Entire Nation Tournament, and despite, uh, you could almost say it was a unneeded injury. So the Wombats went on the Wampum. Eight to zip. Didn't need any heroics from him, but... Either way, injured his leg, and he is now not the speed demon he was known for, which I'm sure has affected Coach Benny's strategy coming into the biggest game of any of their careers. Coach Benny, of course, in her third year of coaching. 
And we've got a full count, ladies and gentlemen. Every light on the board is lit up. Breaking ball. And that will be a swing, and that will be a see ya for Pete the Steeler Wheeler. And he's going to leave a man on. Here we are, top of the third inning for Xenon Estrada's first at bat. Cal Gucci looking much healthier out there on the mound than he did yesterday. He has thrown considerably fewer pitches so far as he sort of belts that one in the center field, but Keisha Phillips with a diving catch to keep him from reaching. And out number one. As I mentioned at the top of this game, Cal Gucci pulled by, was pulled by Coach Benny. Bottom of the sixth inning yesterday. Top of the sixth inning, I'm sorry, for Sanchez. Only the second time he's been pulled this season. He's usually able to finish it out, but that was we were facing unprecedented matters yesterday. One of the most easily the most talented batting core we faced all season. As Kaliguchi reports strikeout number one on the day against Davy Marion for out number two here at the top of the third. Great organ play here by the uh, facility and staff at Super Colossal Dome. Can't thank them enough for agreeing to bring the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe back to Capital City. Where it was started and where it rightfully belongs, with Julie Dunkel now faces an 0-2 count. Dunkel, of course, put the nail in the coffin for the Wombats yesterday. Some sweet revenge there as she strikes out looking. Her Kawaguchi's second strikeout of the day. Pablo Sanchez, back up the bat. Your regular season uh, leader in batting average at 608, which he's currently sitting at right now in the playoffs, funny enough. was not able to pull off any heroic pitching late game yesterday as he pitched from the 6th through 10th innings. He's going to reach first just in time though, so he'll get on first base. See if he can open up this lead a little bit. I'm looking for a kind hit here, pitcher. Amy Frazier again. Sanchez for the, uh, despite getting the L there, is commended by Wombat fans and players alike for his tremendous play as Frazier gets that one over the head of the second baseman. Sanchez is going to round third. Frazier is going to round first, hitting the second. She's going to reach in time. Sanchez reaches third, and Frazier collects herself a nice double, advancing Sanchez and herself in the scoring position and bringing Dante Robinson up the bat with no outs. Sanchez received a lot of love for his valiant effort in pitching yesterday. Back half of that game. And though, you know, uh, Kawaguchi, obviously, very talented pitcher, junior Cy Young award winner for 2020. But Sanchez just could not get the job done. And it just shows the large gap in the pitching between our starter and our bullpen. As Robinson connects on a grounder, it's going to get past the pitcher into the hands of the third baseman, and they're going to keep him where they stand. Bases loaded with no outs here. Bottom of the third inning. Bring up Stephanie Morgan, one of the heroes of the Super Entire Nation Tournament Game 1. Hit an RBI with uh, two people on to start the late game rally that would give them the eventual lead. Connects on that one. Early swing and a foul. Her signature foul left. She's struggled with on and off all season. Really pulled it together there at the end of the se regular season, but has reappeared here in the playoffs as Sanchez takes off her home base, and he's going to make it in time. Throwback to third is not in time, so he will record run number two. And 
Wombats extend their lead by one. And of course brings up Keisha Phillips. Phillips, bottom of the 10th inning, facing a couple outs. Almost was able to rally and keep the Wombats in that one yesterday. Was unable to pull off the Miracle. That's perfectly okay. As she belts this one deep in the center field. Easy catch by the center fielder, though. And they're going to get it back to second. It's to get tag out Robinson. So that's going to be a double play on behalf of the Bananas. Time for a home run. And here comes Jocinda Smith. Let's see what she's able to pull off. Early swing there for strike one. In the bottom of the third inning. Curveball gets her. Gonna foul that one left. And we'll see what Leah Wayne can pull out of her hat. Pitched very well yesterday. Let's see what she has left in the tank. Smith connects. Line drive. Bumbled catch by the shortstop. Gets it the second in time, though, and Frazier will not be able to reach home. And that will be out number three. Bananas, scoreless through three. Here comes Jay Green, the hit pitcher from yesterday's game, who closed out the win for the Bananas on some controversial pitches and some controversial calls, at least on the Wombat side. Didn't hear anything from the bananas side of the field, but that's just the nature of the game. Connects on that one. Easy catch by Kalaguchi, and I'm sure that really felt good. Top fourth, one out. Wombats on top by two here in game two of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. As Sonia Hagen donks that one. Smith will collect it, and the 2 3 will be just in time for Hagen can reach first base. For out number two. Here comes Xena Fromm up to bat. Early swing there. Got some jitters in her second at bat today. Just under the Mendoza diagonal for this playoffs. But definitely still a threat, just like every batter on this banana squad. Easily the most challenging team the Wombats have ever faced this season. Let's that one get by her for strike two. So what Count Gucci pulls off here. One two count. And a swing and a see ya on Kawaguchi's 25th pitch of the day for strikeout number three. Bananas have yet to record a run. This one's out of here. Here comes Ahmed Khan, hero. Game one of the All City Tournament. That one's not going to get down in time, though. Easy catch by Jay Green. Out third, uh, <laughs> Mutt Field, I'm sorry. And I'll be out number one. Wombat's in control here. Bottom of the fourth inning. Looks like I got distracted by my notes. Forgot to mention our fourth inning stretch sponsor, Duff Beer, the official sponsor of Capital City Sports. Duff Beer. Can't get enough of that wonderful duff. Back to the top of the order for Pete the Steeler Wheeler. Uh, what am I supposed to do again? Here in game two. Wheeler again hampered by the ACL sprain. Still going out there and giving it his all though. He may not have the speed on the baseline anymore, but he still has the batting power. Which has been a secret weapon all season. He belts that one. Line drive into right field. Easily collected by the right fielder, though. And he's not going to be able to reach. Hobbling on that leg, it looks like. Bananas. Down two. And up comes pitcher Leah Wayne in the second meeting of this pitching battle. And... Wombat fans, you know what I'm, what I'm going to say here. 
And Wombat fans, you know I hate to say it. We've got a no-hitter going. After four full innings, Kawaguchi gets under it. Easy catch there for out number one. Here at the top of the fifth inning. If you're just joining us from our sister uh, station, BBSN 2, you'll see Wombats are up 2-0 in Game 2 of the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe. The second game in this five-game series, Wombats dropped Game 1 to the Bananas 2-1 in extra innings after an in-the-park home run by Julie Dunkel top of the 10th inning. Wombats were not able to rally, but now have been in control of Game 2. The 1-3 there will be successful for out number 2. Easy play by Kalaguchi, and he is on fire today. You may not see it from his stats. He has 28 pitches thrown and three strikeouts below his normal threshold. As that's a line drive in the left center field. Phillips gets under it, and that's out number three, baby. And we're going into the bottom of the fifth with a no-hitter going. Wombat's in complete control of this one as Pablo Sanchez comes back up the bat. He's one for two today. Leo Wayne still going the distance out there here, bottom of the fifth. She really needs to get something going here if she wants her nutty bananas to have a chance to come back against this Wild Wombats. If they're able to put them in a 2-0 hole. Sanchez gets everything out of that one, and even some, but it's going to be just foul. It would have been a, an amazing home run. Fortunately, no dice. Tips that one back into the crowd. It has been all Wombats here today. Put everything together in the right place. Pitching back on track. Wheeler might not have the speed he had previously, but they have been able to adapt, improvise, and overcome. One, two count. Connects. Pop fly down the left baseline. Wayne gets under it. Easy catch there for out number one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. And here comes Annie Frazier. She's two for two today. Double and a single. The other thing we haven't seen all season throughout the league, other than Kalaguchi's no-hitter, is someone batting the order. Sanchez has gotten a couple close a couple times. Frazier's actually gotten close a couple times. Khan as well. Early swing there to even the count. One's across the board. Connects on that one, pops it up. Wayne bolts for it, scrambling. Easy catch for out number two. And to Wayne and the Bananas credit, they've been able to hold them to two runs. Some of these situations, the Wombats end up blowing them out, i.e. game three of the Super Entire Nation Tournament. Robinson connects on a little grounder. Throw to first is gonna be in time for out number three. And here we go, Wombat fans. Top of the sixth inning. Bananas. Three outs to their name. Wombat's leading. They hold on to this lead. We won't even need that bottom of the sixth. Kalaguchi. We've uh, some technical difficulties here, I'm sorry. Uh, not sure what's going on there. And we're back. Kalaguchi's first pitch. Swing and a miss by Xenon Estrada. The man who tied the game yesterday with an RBI double. The top of the fifth. Connects on this one. Deep belt fly into center field. Keisha Phillips getting under it. She misses the catch. <laughs> it falls out of her glove at the last second. And Estrada's going to stay on first. And that's going to end the no-hitter. After five full innings, something we haven't seen in the playoffs since 86. And Marion, who represents the tying run, grounds it. Frazier takes her time to get to the Morgan for whatever reason, making sure she's in place, giving up a potential double play. Gonna get Estrada out at second. Now number one. So, this looks like once again, no hitter. No, no hitter. I guess you could just call it a hitter. Kalaguchi, no hitter through five full innings. 
gives up a single, top of the sixth. And now Julie Dunkel, the hero for the Nutty Bananas, yesterday, facing a 0-1 count and representing the tying run behind the plate. Now when tips fell, now 0-2 count. We could not lack for theatrics here. That one's going, going, going. It's not going to have the legs to go. Khan scoops it up, whips it to second, and Estrada's going to round second to get the third. That one's going to get past <laughs> Sanchez. Um, gets confused as to what's going on there. Doesn't get it to home in time. Nutty Bananas score one run, and now the tying runs on third. And the pressure is now on Kenigo Guji. You can hear this crowd be silenced. It's a crowd of mainly Wombat fans. Ball one. If you're just joining us from our sister station, BBSN2, you see this thriller of a game going on. Jay Green grounds it. Wheeler gets him out there. Throw to home. They're going to get the tag. And that's it for game two, ladies and gentlemen. After a scare, your final score is going to be Cray Wild Wombats 2, Nutty Bananas 1. It was a close one there, folks, but the Wombats were able to pull it out. Kenny Kalaguchi, Junior Cy Young Award winner, no hitter through five innings, is able to hold on to the victory. Recorded two hits, uh, two runs in the second and the third. Bananas recording three hits there in the final inning. Unfortunate there for the stat book, but really fortunate there for the Wombats. Take a look at our progressive end of game stats. Some impressive play there by the Wombats. Nothing to be ashamed of along those hits. Only one run allowed. And take a look that join us back tomorrow after the Wombats even the score one apiece here in the Ultra Grand Championship of the Universe, exclusively on BBSN. For all of us here at BBFL Broadcasting, I'm Ethan Leach. Thank you, and good night.